Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over advice I believe every new ER nurse should hear. So let's get started. So to me, the first and most important tip is going to be don't get cocky. The ER is not forgiving. It will humble you. Cocky newbies are dangerous because they think they know everything. This makes them more prone to mistakes, and these mistakes can end up hurting somebody or killing someone. On top of this, no one wants to teach somebody who thinks they know everything. You're going to be alone in the ER if you have this type of attitude, and that's terrifying. But I'm confident that none of you will be like this, but I feel that you needed to hear this from, at least, from one person at least once. So again, don't get cocky. The ER will humble you if you get cocky. The next piece of advice is that it's okay to feel slow. It's okay to feel so overwhelmed all the time. Becoming a good ER nurse takes a long time. There is so much to learn. Within the same day, you can take care of really sick adult patients. You can take care of really sick pediatric patients. And you can even have a crash C-section in one of your rooms. So it's perfectly normal to feel slow and to feel so overwhelmed because there's going to be so much going on at once. The important thing will be that every day you are learning something and little by little becoming the nurse you are meant to be. Things that you should work on daily include prioritizing, grouping your care, and safely performing skills faster, and as well working on your critical thinking every single day. Also, I want to add this, it's okay to cry. It happens. You pick yourself back up and you keep going. Don't get discouraged. I know that it's very hard, but in the long term, once you get a little more confident, it's so worth it. You're going to enjoy what you do. Next is reflecting on your experiences. It's extremely important that you do this. This allows you to come up with questions for things you don't fully understand. And by reflecting, you can better prepare for when a similar scenario occurs in the future. For example, let's say that you had your first full arrest. By reflecting on what happened, you'll be better and faster the next time around. You won't freeze as much and your nerves will be more calm. You'll reflect on what medications were, were given, on specific things that happen like checking a blood sugar, which medications to get ready before the patient arrives, what pressors are commonly used if ROSC is achieved, why was antidocapnography used, or how the preceptors assess for cardiac activity via ultrasound, or perhaps an IO was placed and you realize that you don't know how to perform IO placement. By reflecting on your experiences, you'll be better the next time around and you can make a list of things you need to look up or ask. Doing this ensures that you are building up your knowledge little by little and hopefully by the end of your preceptorship, you have a good solid foundation of knowledge and experience. So because sometimes personalities just don't match, I sincerely believe, believe that it's okay to ask for a different preceptor. So advocate for yourself if you need to. It's your training. I don't see this happening too often, I'll be honest because most people who do precept actually enjoy it, but it does happen. So know that it's okay for you to ask for a different preceptor if it's just not working out. However, though, just because I said this, it doesn't mean that you ask for a new preceptor just because they are being hard on you or because they have high standards for you. You're dealing with people's lives. They better have high standards. They better be strict with you. As I said, the ER is not forgiving. It will humble you. And sometimes preceptors just want to make sure that you develop a little bit of a tough skin before you go out on your own. Next, if you feel like something is wrong, you have that gut feeling, then something is for sure wrong, even if you can't quite pinpoint it. So take it serious. What I want you to do from now on is to try and figure it out. Put the pieces together. Do a complete assessment of your patient. Check anything and everything connected to or touching your patient and try to figure out what's going on. How come you have this feeling? This is so that you start developing your nursing problem solving ability, especially as an ER nurse, because we're known to just make stuff happen to make things work, right? So you need to develop this problem solving ability. 
let's start with a, an example, right? It's a simple one. Let's say that you're placing a pulse ox on your patient and it's just not reading. Figure it out, right? So is it the cord? Is it the monitor that's not working? Do you have to change the side? Do you have to change from finger to like another finger? You have to put it on the patient's ear? Figure it out, right? Try different things. And this principle of figuring it out applies to everything else. For example, what if your intubated patient starts desatting? What are you going to do, right? So this ability of figuring stuff out and making it work is going to apply for everything you do as an ER nurse. So you need to start developing this ability little by little. And finally, of course, if you just can't figure it out, ask for help, especially in those life-saving situations, ask for help and learn from what happens. Learn from what the other staff that is there what do they do reflect on it so the next time this happens this problem that you had next time it happens you're able to better handle it you'll be faster and you'll know what's going on right again this goes back also to reflecting so that the next time something happens you can do it better you can do it faster and you build your knowledge and your foundation with the previous tip in mind know that no question is a dumb question. I'm serious. You're dealing with people's lives. So if you ever have any doubt or a question about anything, you better ask. If it's a question on a medication, call your pharmacist and ask away. That's why they're there. If it's a order, if it's a question on an order, call the provider and ask them to clarify it, to clarify it. If it's any other question, ask your preceptor, ask other nurses, ask your fellow new nurses, ask until you get an answer. And then next, there is always going to be something for you to do as an ER nurse. Are your rooms ready for the next patient? Is the glucometer checked? You can even help restock, right? What about helping your fellow nurses? If you have a really sick patient, do they need pressers? Should you start mixing them instead of waiting for a pharmacy? Or even just starting to fill out the paperwork that's going to be necessary. There is always something, something to do as an ER nurse, especially as a newbie. Even asking your preceptor or other nurses questions about treatments and or why certain things are happening. Ask them to show you how to work the defibrillator or how you pace a patient or even ask them to show you where the rapid transfuser is and how it works. There's a million things that you can do or even ask about. Again, be proactive, not reactive. Let's go into the next one, which is safety. I have a video on this, so I'm not going to go too in depth. But if you don't know something, ask for help. Check your patient allergies, know exactly what medications you're giving, and make sure that you're not contraindicated for your patient. Always, always, always ask, your, ask yourself, is this safe for my patient? It doesn't matter if it's you or one of the docs doing something, you need to ask yourself, is this safe for my patient? And don't be afraid to intervene. If the providers are doing a procedure and you don't think it's safe for your patient, don't be afraid to intervene. That's your role as a nurse, right? You are there to protect your patient and to be there for your patient, right? So again, always ask yourself, is this safe for my patient? And finally, which I also think is one of the more important tips that I can give is teamwork makes the dream work. The ER is chaotic, it's hectic. There's always something going on. You have to help each other out. It's a team. It's a family. You see so much. You see a lot of despair. You see a lot of death. Patients can even be abusive. And a lot of times there even isn't even enough staff to help. So how do you get by? You get by with the help of your team, your support system. So help each other out. Teamwork makes the dream work. I think that being a good ER nurse depends a lot on your experiences and taking the time to look up and familiarize yourself with topics that you don't fully understand. So in the description, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books. I read these over and over from time to time. You always have to keep learning to be a good ER nurse. And if you enjoyed the video today and got something out of it, I would really appreciate a like and a follow. And if you want to support further, I also have a Redbubble uh, mini store where I kind of just have some stickers and some shirts. If you want to support further, go ahead and check it out. Besides that, as always, I know I just said it, but I want to say it again. 
teamwork makes the dream work and here at emergency chaos we are proactive not reactive thank you everyone bye